All right. Um, all of you have server access right now, right? Yes. Yes. All right. <coughs> so if you have the organizer access, I hope all of you know how to record your own sessions. Uh, we got that, but we need to Well, let me try. I think you're already recording it, right? Uh, yeah, in case you want to record it, so I'll tell you how to do it. On the go to meeting panel, you have file on top, right? So click on file. Yes. You would find preferences there. Click on preferences. And once you click on preferences, there is the recording tab on to the left. Uh, we don't have a way. No, on file, we don't see that. Uh, oh, that's uh, yeah. Yes, the recording is there, Sakin. Okay. Don't touch anything in audio. Go to uh, recordings. In that, you have two options. Record in go to meeting format, convert to Windows Media Player file. Select the option which says convert to Windows Media Player file and then there is save in so you can browse to the location where you want to save it and uh, click ok Emmanuel we have a problem we yeah. we are using Apple okay. so, so in You're Apple we have okay. save recordings choose the directory yeah yeah so, yeah, just do that. You don't have those options in there? So did you get to the recordings tab? So we choose the folder. Uh -huh. And, and then click OK. And it record in GoToMeeting format? No, no, no. Go to Convert to Windows Media Player format. Yeah. This one? Convert, convert. Done. Yeah, once you have done that, click OK. No, no, no. I mean, I'll, this, we don't know how to use this Apple <laughs> machine. Okay. So, let oh, so it's not letting you to select the convert to Windows Media Player file. Exactly, yeah. All right, so that's fine. I think, uh, anyways, the session is being recorded. Just that it will take a little time to upload. So in case you wanted to, I was letting you know. All right, we'll send the session anyways. What we will do is from tomorrow we'll use a different machine. So then we can okay. allow us. Oh, no, even on that one we cannot. No. Uh, we can. We, don't we can. We, can. we don't have admin rights. I tried. In the okay, we'll try. We have okay. I will try a different machine also tomorrow. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm going to put all of you on mute for a bit. Uh, before that, you have server access, and what we have looked at last session is basically trying to understand the extended star schema. So before we get into this session, do you have any questions on extended star schema? Uh, no. All right. A straight no. All right, so what is the maximum number of uh, SID tables or mass data tables that you can connect to a single dimension? 16. Listen to my question. What is the maximum number of mass data, data tables can I connect to one dimension? 13. No. 250. 248. 248, yeah. And how do you get to that number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have a max. You have a maximum of two fifty-five. Two fifty-five columns. Six of them are reserved for SAP. One is the dimension key. The remaining ones are two forty-eight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is the maximum number of dimensions? customized dimensions that you could use to connect to the fact table? It's a 16. Yeah, 16. Out of 16. Maximum back. number of customizable dimensions. 13. 
13. 13. 13. Because 16 are water available, 3 of them are reserved for SAP. Okay. So the remaining ones are 13. But in extended, it, we can collect uh, uh, 3000. The dimensions will be the same. You only have a maximum of 16 oh, okay. dimensions inside the InfoQ. Okay, I got it, got it. All right, another twisted question here. What is the number of key figures that you can have in a fact table? Did we talk about it? No? The key figure, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, key figure. Uh, you didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, many. No, many. Uh, so when we've seen the uh, fact table now, that's also a table, right? So it has a maximum of 255 columns. Mm -hmm. So out of these 255 columns, okay. So 16, fact, 16 dimensions will connect to the fact table, right? So you have 16 keys, dimension keys. So 255 minus 16. Six of them are reserved for SAP. All right, so you have 255 minus 22 is 233. All right, so this is the number of uh, key figures that can be on the on one fact table, maximum number. All right. Now, <coughs> these are fundamental stuff, all right? And most of BW people do not know why you come to that number. I don't want you to be ignorant about that. You have to understand why those numbers are there, okay? That will allow you to understand the stuff a little more clearly. So. Mm -hmm. Make sure you ask yourself questions, why did these numbers have to come, all right? All right. <clears throat> so in last session, what we have uh, covered is we try to understand we have created info objects of type characteristics and key figures. We have created or we have tried to understand the theoretical part about how to go ahead and use the extended star schema or what exactly is extended star schema, what is its advantage over normal star schema. So before we go in and look at how to use the info cube on extended star schema, we will have to first understand how do we load data into the smallest objects which we call them as info objects. Okay. So here <coughs> we have info objects for BW on HANA training. We have created two objects. One is customer number and product number and the key figures we have created here, price, quantity and amount. Now, if I have to load data into my customer number, how to go about it? I have talked to you that every uh, info object has two major divisions. One is the value part. The second one is the description part. So you can call this as the text part. Okay. So we will see how we can go ahead and use that. So I'm going to put it on mute. All right. So guys. In case you have any questions, please unmute me. Unmute yourself, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so customer number, the technical name of the customer number is Z C U S T underscore N M. So I'm going to copy this technical name. If I need to load data into BW, I need to bring that object to the info provider menu. I cannot smuggle through data in any other of these submenus. Okay? The only way that I can bring data into BW is if I can take this object into the info provider menu. So I'm copying this technical name of customer number going into the info provider menu. And here we have 
info area for BW on HANA training. I right click on it and say insert characteristic as info provider. So I click on that. So I'm going to add my object in here and say continue. So you can see this here, the object is added in here, customer number. The only thing is it will have two, one is attribute and one is text. In the attribute you will have to load the value of the customer number. In the text you will have to load the description. Okay. So what I want us to follow in this session is how is the basic path of how to load data into the BW environment. Okay, we're going to use a CSV file, for example, to load data into the BW environment. The same thing will apply when you're fetching data from the transaction ECC system as well. So first, if we understand the path, then we'll understand it with the main transaction system too. So you have the attribute value or the um, the actual value part about of customer number that we need to load, all right? So there are two, uh, one is the attribute and the other one is the text. So how do I go ahead and load this? So I go into the start menu, go into the run, open an Excel sheet and I'm going to give Z customer number. And I'm going to give in my customer number, customer number 001 through, let's say, through 20. I'm going to file and save as on my desktop. Customers underscore ATTR I'm saving this as a CSV file, comma delimited file, comma separated value. I'm going to click on save. Okay. Once I do that, I can close the file. Don't keep the file open when you're trying to load the data. All that I have is customer number. Now, the system should be aware of the data that is going to come through into my BW system. All right. And so I need to enable the system, let the system know that, okay, this kind of data is coming through. And how will I let the system know about it? By creating a structure in there. And how do I create a structure? On the PSA, if I enable the system to let the system know that, okay, there is uh, this structure data that is going to come through, I can go ahead and give that structure in there. So what I will do is, <coughs> I go to the source system here and my source system, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use a file source system. So let me choose one source system here. So I'll call this as flat file. Okay. So I go to the data sources here. In the data sources, on the top here, choose a source system. I can select which source system that I want. Within file, I can go ahead and select the flat file source systems. And here, <coughs> because we will be creating multiple uh, data sources, meaning structures for data that are going to come through, we want to arrange the data in a very organized fashion. And for that, we have something called as application components. The application component is a way of creating a folder so that you can restrict it to have only the data sources from your end. So I can right click on data sources and say create application component. 
here I'm going to put in the name Z application component underscore BW I'm going to type it in application I'm going to click on continue So you can see this here at the bottom you have application component for BW on HANA and you have a technical name that is created here. If I right click on this application component it will ask me to create a data source. Okay? To move data from the Excel sheet or even from an SAP system I need to create a data source. The data source enables me to create a structure on my persistent staging area. It enables me to create and get the system ready to accept the data that is coming from my source system. So I'm going to click on create data source. I'm going to give a name Z, let's say ZDS underscore customer underscore attribute. So ZDS underscore customer attribute. The data that I am going to bring is attribute data, the value data. So let me copy this. Say continue. I need to give <coughs> the short description medium and long description. In the second tab is my extraction tab. I need to click on extraction and I need to tell the system I'm going to bring the data from my desktop. Here I have customer attribute HANA. I'm going to ignore my first row which is my column name. The data format that we're going to bring in is not fixed length, it is actually CSV file. So I need to tell that the delimiter is a comma delimiter and my escape sign is semicolon. There is a proposal tab in here, you don't need to click on it. Go into the fields tab and in the fields tab you need to mention the name of the customer number. All right? And here the name of the customer number that we're going to use is Z customer underscore name. So this is the technical name of the info object. So it is asking me the info object name if it is actually there. So when I give that the structure of the customer will be defined so that I can use that as a structure. So when I go ahead, if I want to use any object, I've told you that you need to click on the activate button. So I'm going to click on the activate button in here. When I click on the activate button, it's going to create a table on the persistent staging area. And that will be my structure. Okay. So you can go in here and you can see ZDS underscore customer attribute. This is the one that I'm going to create. This is my data source. I need to link my data source to the actual object that I have created, which is customer number attribute. I right click on it and say, the way how you create a link between my data source and my actual object is to create a tunnel through it. And that is transformation is the path to connecting my actual value. So right click on it and say create transformation. My target is to load data into Z customer number. My source is data source. The name of the data source is ZDS underscore customer attribute. The source system name is called as flat file. And so I'm going to click on continue. So you can see here from the data source 
customer number data is going to go into the info object and that too into the value part of the info object called customer number. So here if you want to alter data or if you want to write any rule, you can click on the is equal to here and you will have the option to modify the data. Direct assignment or formula or initial or you want to write a routine, you can do all of that. So once you have the transformation ready, you can go and activate the transformations. Active. So now if you see here, from the value to the data source, you have transformation in between. But how do you pick data from that file? All right. So for that you have a program called as info package. It has an interface, so right click on it, so you always right click on the data source, so that we in the data source we have defined where the file is and all that, right? So when I create my info package, the data source will send this data into my info package, so right click on the data source and say create info package. So when you create an info package, always remember, the info package allows you to move data from your source system to the persistent staging area. So you can go ahead and this is the name of the info package that I'm going to give. It is IP, IP underscore. And so I say save. So here, if you look at the extraction tab, all this information I have given in the data source, it automatically brings this in here, okay? Processing, processing data only till the PSA. We are sending full load, so you can see full update, and I have the option to schedule. So I can let the system know when I want to run it, Right now I want to run it immediately, so I'm going to click on the start menu. So remember my decision, allow. At the bottom you have another information, data was requested. So if I go into, there's this monitor kind of tab in here. So click on that. What you will find is that there are 20 records that have been uploaded to the persistent staging area. I hope you remember the architecture. We have the persistent staging area as the gateway for BW. So if I want to see what is there in the persistent staging area, I can click on these three cylinders. And here I can click continue. This is my customer number 001 through customer number 20. Okay. This data is still at the persistent staging area only. Now to move this data from the persistent staging area to the actual data target you need to send the data through the transformation. Always remember, once data enters the BW system, any movement of data inside the BW system will only happen using DTP, data transfer process. It will never happen through info package. In 3.5 version and below, you had the info package had the option to move data to the object also, but now you don't have that. And so, we will use the data transfer process. If you right click on this folder, DTP, you can say create data transfer process. And this will automatically create it. So it's saying from the flat file to the customer number object, the source and target can be defined here. So you can click on continue. Do you want to do a delta load or do you want to do a full load? You can define it here and say execute. For executing, this tab is not available, which means you have to first activate the object and then 
you will have the execute button available. So click on execute. Alright, data is loaded. If you go into the data target, you will find 20 records transferred, 20 records added. Okay. So this is how you would pick the data from a flat file and send the data to the data target. What you have loaded so far is just the value part of it. So if I say CN001, what would you understand? Customer number 001. So you need to give a description so that a common man can understand your data. And for that what you will have to do is you will also want to load the textual data. The text data always how does the system know how I should link my text data? So that is done using the main customer number which is CN001. And when I talk about text here I am typing it in English. Let's say somebody is in China, I'll, they will type it in Chinese. Somebody is in Japan, they will. So based on that you will also have to mention what is the language that you are using. So there is a default structure which is uh, one is <coughs> you have to define the main object which is customer number so that you link to that object. Then you have to define the language and then the text that you want to define. Alright. So I am going to define that. I go into my data source again. Customer number texts. So I go into my data source. I right click on my application component, say create data source. I'm calling this as Z, ZDS underscore cust underscore text underscore H. This is of type text, so I'm selecting master data text. I'm going to click on continue. So do we have a file created for it? We haven't created, so let's go and create the file first. I'm giving the description though. So I need to define where the file is. So let's open Excel. Z customer number for language zero L A N G U since it's an SAP defined object and then zero TXT S H short text. Customer number we have given from C N zero zero one. So CN20, language is E and short texts, let's say I give it something like customer1, Let's say this is my description. I can give anything. I'm going to save this also as a CSV file. I'm going to click on save. So here I come back to my data source and in my data source I am going to give the name of the data source 
and the file name is customer text underscore h first row I'm going to ignore this is going to be a CSV file a comma separated value and the escape sign is semicolon in the field section the structure of data that is going to come is Z customer number you will have two extra columns right so you need to add those extra columns one is zero language so that is an SAP defined in for objects so it's starting with zero then you have a zero txt sh short text so this is the structure I'm going to activate this so for all text fields you will have this structure zero language and short text I'm going to take this technical name go to the info provider right click on this and say create transformation I'm going to link this with the data source So if you can see here, the subtype also is one way of how you link the object, text or attribute or hierarchy, you can mention that, text and say so continue. So here is how the structure is. So when we are trying to load data using CSV files, we are defining the structure there. When we are trying to bring data from SAP, you will have to make sure that each field maps to a particular info object. That is why gap analysis is a mandatory step within the when you are trying to bring data from SAP into BW. So because the field names in ECC system would be in German, would be stuff that sometimes will not make any sense for example I'm saying trying to send uh, vendor data here so it says LIF LIFNR LIFNR which means vendor number so if I create my info object as vendor number my source data should be mapped from LIFNR to vendor number so I need to create a table that will tell my mapping so here is it and once I have a straight mapping done, I can activate this object. Okay, so let's pick the file using the info package. I right click on the data source. Right click on the data source and say create info package. IP underscore. Continue. Go to schedule and say start immediately. Data was requested. You have 20 rows of data. The next step is to move data into the actual BW object. For that, you need the DTP data transfer process right click on it and say create data transfer process and say continue activate the object say execute So now you will find that 20 rows in the text also. If you go into contents,
Now that I have loaded data here, the master data information. So if I go into my customer number now, info object. So this is the SID table relating to customer number. How many have I loaded? 20, right? So if I double click on my SID table and go in here, want you to look at the contents of it. So what did I tell you when I said SID table? The SID table is created the moment I create the info object and when I load data into the info object, the system automatically creates numerics associated with the alphanumeric values. So here I didn't do anything, so if I click on execute, for CN001 the system has created a value 2, for 2, 3. 3, 4 and so, it has created it for the entire set, alright. Wherever it is doing calculation, it will use these numbers instead of these values, okay. So the SID table is created automatically in the background. Similarly, you can go into the text tab or text table, you will see all the data in here, the language and the short text. Right. Uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we saw the uh, customer number uh, for the for the SID customer number SID. We saw the numerics, but in this case, we didn't see. Uh, this is is this SID table? For the text? This is text table. Oh, this is a text table. So. Yeah. So you can see this here naming here, starting with the T. Oh, okay. Starting. Yeah, I told us. Okay. And one more question, it's a basic question, but okay, when we are uh, using the actual SAP object data, like a one order data, for the one order also do you need to create all of these like you know characteristics and all like you know, physically or we can download those into here? You will have to create them. Everything. Each characteristic. Or if you're using a business content setup, then you can check if it is already available in SAP. Yeah, but one order will have a many uh, fields, right? So if you want to report when on... When you say one order, what exactly do you mean? Like, you know, all the uh, sales order and uh, opportunity CRM level. Okay, so if you're using any of the SAP's predefined uh, objects, like ECC is already there, right? So. Let's say I'm trying to bring in some material information or customer information. Uh, that can be directly be available here. So let's say I'm using, uh, I'm trying to bring in customer number, which is KUNNR and ECC. Mm -hmm. You can go into info objects and you can search for zero customer. This is an SAP object, so it is not available here but you can actually go into the business content and search or you can even search in the modeling section under RSD1 you have a transaction code <coughs> so here you can give a technical name zero so the system will tell whether it is there or not. Mm -hmm. So you can say display. 
So this is the zero customer. So if you look at it, mass data text are there. The attributes are also defined for it. See the number of attributes it has. We can just copy this into that info area or what? You can directly copy it into your object. Okay. okay. But how do you know I mean it is Kuna? How, how do I know what? Is it a Kuna customer number? So based on the technical information here, in the general tab, so there is this table called as, so you can go to the ABAP dictionary SC11. There is a table called as RSTR field SH. Mm -hmm. And if you go and click on display, contents. So info object name and field name. So here let's say I give the field name as KUNNR. Okay. Right. I want to know what is my info object name. I say execute. Kunar, you can give zero customer or zero competitor or zero customer on this zero data. All of these will match with Kunar. Wherever this field is exist, the all the info objects will be matches. So these are basically based on the technical features. It is a characteristic of type with length ten. Okay. So it could be used anywhere. Yeah. So what you're saying is but like at this point in this context we're using it as zero customer, so you could map it between K U N N R and zero customer. This table basically is a relationship table between SAP fields and info objects mm -hmm. based on the data sources that are available. So here if you see transfer structure is the first name. Transfer structure means when you're transferring data from ECC here, the structure defined has all of this information. And where do you get all of this? Based on business content. Do we need to activate these because sometime as uh, I'm hearing you it. You need to activate this. You basically have an understanding that, okay, customer has, KUNNR is the one which has a char character and is a length of 10. What is my object that I can use in BW which has the same technical features? So zero customer is one option. So when you have customer number as KUNNR, it is always better to use zero customer. The context might be something relating to competitors. So you want to use competitor instead of customer. So you could use it or zero data or sold to. Based on how you want to use the KUNNR value in your model. Okay, now here I want it as customer number. So I'm going to use zero customer number. Yeah, so in SAP CRM side, mean they are also providing so many info objects. They are saying that those are not activated. Mean, but if you want to use BW report, you can activate those business uh, so info objects. Absolutely. So here, if you go into the normal BI content. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I would say we used to do info area for validation sheet CRM specific. Okay, or I could just say search for CRM CRM. Okay, so if I see here, yeah, this is the one. I have a whole bunch of CRM objects, okay, CRM analytics, yeah. and these are all CRM objects, okay. So they have, these have been previously used, and so you can just activate these objects. Based on what you want to bring from there, you can activate this, and you can use them as models in here. But you need to understand where you're going to use all of them. The technical right. names are there, but each of them is used for a specific purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is there any place where we can check, like you know, uh, like you know, which object is for for what? 
Is there any uh, like? It actually has a value which is basically f f one that you press here, mm -hmm. but sometimes it might bring in content, sometimes it might not. Okay. Okay. The From best place to search for that object is in the SAP help dot sap dot com. Okay. So if you yeah, take in, this in, uh, in the help dot sap dot com, we see like you know data sources. Uh, standard data sources when we search for any yeah, so if you go in help dot sap dot com mm -hmm. technical name by search by technical name yeah so you go and put this object in there in the search menu yeah we get like you know, OCR and ACTV activity and you can search for that object mm -hmm. so which exactly is the uh, sub object you can go ahead and add that in here. You can see the analytics if you want. Analytics. So usually you should be able to find this here only. Main page is this is the main search object. So what happens is if you go into the SAP you have the support portal. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, uh, when you even when you search by like you know, transaction names, like an activity opportunities, normally we get the yeah, uh, number also zero, uh, zero, OP, zero, OP, yeah. zero CRM exactly. on the PT or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think Google again also gives yeah, us yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I think I think, I think we got that. Yeah. So, even a uh, couple of basic questions. And those things we did like a lot of things like info sets, info provider, and then data source and all those things we did since last week. We did not create any transport, right? No, we haven't. So, like we do it like in a sandbox or in a development box. Do we need to do all those things like in every system? Yeah. So okay. let's say here I've created zero uh, customer number. Okay, I mean. I've created my own object. The name of the object is Z customer underscore NM, right? Finish this, I think, next one. The object that I've created is, uh, where is that? Z customer underscore NM, right? Yep. So if I go into, usually whenever my system, because we have only one system in this landscape, so if you have created an object, if it's a, an actual system, the system will immediately uh, prompt you for a transport number. Do you want to save this in a particular, uh, so here if I go in and go into the transport connection. There's a transport connection here. There's this info area that we have created. Let's say That's here is BW on top of HANA. So this is for HANA. And I want to look at my info objects by info area.
Thank you. Okay, so if I open this, I have my object, customer number. I can select this and I can say transport or I will have to first make sure I can insert this and then grouping is I can choose if I want to bring everything together or if I want if there's a particular hierarchy collection mode and then if I select this I can do transport okay okay so I can just drag this in here so which is my system that I want to send the data to I have to choose that Mm -hmm. okay. So now I have the option to transport. So I can never transport an object if it is in the temporary package. Yeah. Dollar TMP is what it is in. So I need to create a package and I need to transport it in that package. So when I go ahead and transport it in the so specify a transportable package not possible okay dollar tmp is a temporary package so you can do it so if you save it in a transport like uh, select this let's say there is I have to give in something like ZBW or something. So I'll have to create that. A package needs to be created from uh, SE80 or SE89. And then I'll have to go ahead and apply on transport. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So if you go into transaction code slash OSC9 or uh, SC10 or even SC01, you would find all your transports in here created by name, display, if I have anything in here on my name, nothing. So if I put an asterisk and say display, you would find transports in here. Okay. I can open this and, and you would find, let's say a function module needs to be transferred, I need to release that, I right click on it and say release F9. Okay. So once you release the object, you will have a tick mark in there. So I right click on this and say release. So version of this on different, so here. So see here you have a check mark that has come. This transport has been released. Okay. Yeah. Then you can go into transaction code STMS. And there you can mention which system you want to go ahead and import. So you can click on transport. So whichever is the system where you want. So I just released that. I can import that object here again. Okay. Okay, so this is for importing requests. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> what I want you guys to do basically is I have created. I have taken the info object here which is my customer number and I have created and loaded data for that info object in my info area. Mm -hmm. okay. I want you to go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, I want you to go ahead and load data. I want you to go ahead and create your info area want you to create info objects and load data 
based on how we have seen. Okay. That's all. Attribute data and text data. Okay. One more thing, Emmanuel. So we did it from like data source was Excel, right? Is it possible like to do other way around? Meaning? Like we have already data in BW and now we need to download back into Excel? You could. There's an option called as open up destination. I will show that. We'll, so it will come out like a file. Uh, I've downloaded it. I think it's there on this desktop. Just a moment. Another so here if you see it will come up as two files one is a content file which basically has the structure of what is coming through and on the other file what it will send out is a data file so all the data will be here it will be sending out that data so we'll see that that is called as open hub destination we'll work on how to use that Okay. So our homework is to create customer and text file. So Close what file. I want you to do is create five info objects in your own, whichever is your topic of uh, or which interests you. It could be something relating to manufacturing. It could be relating to cinema. It could be relating to real estate. Whichever is the one that interests you. Create okay. five info objects, okay, and load data into them. Okay. All right. So here I have loaded customer number and product number. You could go ahead and load something like if you're dealing with cinema, movies, and actors and actresses. Depends on how you want to load the data. If you are trying to load data for real estate, you want to load region data, state data, location data, okay. so price data you want to load. All right. So depending on whichever interests you, because at the beginning you need to have that interest. You want to see a report based on this at the end of your course. You want to go and see how you want to analyze data. So the one that interests you is the best way to go ahead. Okay. All right. One more thing, Emmanuel. So do you have like uh, so many icons we have? Do you have like a list? What those icons means? Like this triangle is info set, right? This triangular one is catalog. It also is the same symbol for characteristics. Okay. The reason why they have a triangle is because when you do analysis, you are going to split data into manager level mid-manager, decision-maker. So it is based on the triangle, whether you're on the top of the list or on the bottom level. That will be available based on the pyramid or triangle. All right? Okay. Whereas when you talk about key figures, it's always numbers. That It is more in a grid. All right? That is why you have this square with a grid in there. Okay. Okay. So, is that doable for tomorrow's session? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Nageswara? Okay. All right, guys, then <clears throat> I will be, we will be meeting at the same time tomorrow. Okay. okay. And we're going to look at uh, how to load data into info objects where we have attributes okay not just single but if you have multiple objects how to load data and how do we use this data to load data into the info queue okay, okay. so you need to finish off whatever we talk in every session so that you will be ready for the next session it is all interdependent okay so the first foundation is this Understand the path of how you're creating the objects so that that will give you uh, a stepwise as to how you should proceed. All right? I mean, if it's possible, like send us the video tonight so we can do it tomorrow morning. The video will be sent. Uh, I will talk to them immediately. 
the yeah. moment see because it converts the video from go to meeting to windows format that's why i asked you if you want to record your own stuff okay okay so once it converts then he has to upload that okay okay all right guys so take uh, care yeah. you too thank you have a nice evening bye guys bye bye ये आप इसमें प्रैक्टिस करना बहुत जरूरी है यार ये तो